Hey, it's cuties. This is a buffalo. It's a chocolate coated wafer from Israel. Mm, mm, mm. We had beautiful weather in New York today. That's probably why the camera was like, Bleh. but we're back. All right. And ready to rock on this freaking weekend. Yeah. I'm ready. Lots of people are walking around. A lot of businesses are opening up. I guess they call it spring because it feels like things are bouncing back, right? So I hope things are feeling wider awake and healthier in your neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood and it's a beautiful night in your cell phone. And don't think too hard about the outside world right now because we're about to go on a journey deep into your mind. And the more focused you are, the better. Because a spectacular performance might just get your share of the $5,000 prize pot. Ooh. $5,000! And if you're feeling smart, a VIP ticket will throw extra thrills in your game. That gives you a grab at the $1,500 VIP pot if we sell 100 tickets. Right now we're at about 50, so if 50 more people jump in, we're gonna do it, but we won't sell more than 150. So don't dilly-dally, babies. Show some courage. Yeah. And like we always do, we got another great charity to tell you about tonight. Check out the Justin Turner Foundation, supporting so many people in their times of need. Los Angeles Dodger Justin Turner and his wife Courtney created the foundation to support homeless veterans, children, and their families who are battling life-altering illnesses. Since 2016, they provided housing and support for dozens of veterans. In addition, they have provided over 70,000 toys and 14,000 bicycles to children in the Los Angeles area during the holidays and helped to safely distribute food during the pandemic, supporting local residents as well as restaurants. So HQ is saluting and donating to the Justin Turner Foundation, and we got a message from the Turners. Take it away, y'all. Hey, HQDs, it's Justin and Courtney Turner, co-founders of the Justin Turner Foundation. Our mission is to support homeless veterans and children and their families battling life-altering illnesses and diseases. However, during this pandemic, we had to pivot to help Angelinos who are in search of their next hot meal. In order to help support the local restaurants that were struggling, we placed large meal orders and had them sent up to the Los Angeles Dream Center's food line. This resulted in millions of meals served to Angelinos in need. And it resulted in the naming of the Justin and Courtney Turner Food Bank, which now distributes meals to over 60 organizations. Please consider visiting our website to learn more. And thank you so much for your support. Oh, the children. Reggie! Thanks so much, Turners. And they're right. You can head to justinturnerfoundation.com to find out how you can help. <laughs> Look them up and hook them up. All right, I'm ready to get into Q1. Don't forget, tomorrow, Oscar night, okay? HQ sending 12 team questions down the red carpet to test your Academy Award acumen. Thrills, twists, and rest assured, there will be talk of mank. So be here tomorrow. Nothing to it but to HQ it with question number one. What did the V stand for when VH1 first went on air? Vermilion, video, or vampirism? Woo! All right, just like MTV strayed from its roots and drifted into a reality TV format, VH1 made essentially the same move and abandoned its original name, Video Hits One. Can't count on anything to say the same. Video! 37,912 players got it right. Video, babies. Yeah. Kicking it off in a real way. Moving on to Q2. What'd it do? Who is not an enemy in the original Super Mario Bros? Bowser, Donkey Kong, or Piranha Plant? Yeah, we back and in full effect. All right, the two have a long history going back before the, the NES, but on his way to liberate the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario did not run into Donkey Kong. They're evenly uh, matched when he doesn't have barrels to throw. Donkey Kong, 31,084 players got it right. Yeah, there he is. That was the answer to Q2. Question number three in the place to be. Which African nation is on the mainland continent? Mauritius, Seychelles, or Togo? What is it gonna be? 
There's over 50 nations in Africa with just a few dotted around the mainland in island form. But stuck between Ghana and Benin, you'll find Togo. Don't confuse uh, Mauritius with Mauritania, especially if you're a pilot. Yeah, 28,799 players got that right. Togo, yeah, yeah. Question number four, knocking on your door. What is the liquid that floats on top of packaged yogurt? Rennet, skim milk, or whey? What's it gonna be? Okay, dairy is versatile and can take many weird forms. With a little rennet, you can whip up many kinds of cheese, but the liquid in yogurt is leftover whey. Yeah, that's one of the good things bacteria bring us. 26,289 players got it right. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. <laughs> Question number five for the children. What state's name indicates that it has trees? Alaska, California, or Pennsylvania? There's some great stories about how the states got their names, but it's pretty simple that the uh, Latin word for forest is silva, leading to Pennsylvania, that William Penn gave us a state name. That and William Penn gave us. <laughs> 23,391 players got that right. Pennsylvania, home of the trees. Question number six. And it goes a little something like this. Which was not an alter ego of the late rapper Gregory Jacobs? Dr. Octagon, Humpty Hump, or Shock G? What's it gonna be? We lost a huge talent this week with the loss of Jacobs, whose achievements included discovering Tupac and a long list of stage names and alter egos. Although it's Cool Keith who performs as Dr. Octagon. Yeah. Dr. Octagon was the answer. R.I.P. Shock G. You already know. 22,783 players got it right. Y'all are crushing this game so far. We got six, six more questions. It's a halfway mark, babies. All right, Q7. Johannes Kepler was alive at the same time as which other astronomer? Copernicus, Galileo, or Newton? Okay, no one did more than these guys to expand our knowledge of space. And the Dutchman was not just a contemporary, he actually corresponded with Galileo. I don't know what they talked about. Probably space. <laughs> 17,365 plates. Uh, my dearest Galileo, the sky was very clear tonight. What about by you? Oh, it was cloudy. <laughs> All right, question number eight. No, you're feeling great. Woo Which of these is a character played by John Leguizamo? Mercutio, Toulouse, Lautrec, or Vida Bohème? Two of these characters he's bumped up against uh, when he played Chi Chi and Tybalt in Tu Wong Fu and Romeo and Juliet. And of course, he was Toulouse Lautrec in Moulin Rouge. To me, he'll always be Luigi. Kitchy, kitchy, ya ya da da! Mocha chocolata! <laughs> Creole Lady Marmalade. Put some on toast. 16,242 players got that right. Question number nine. Which of these US states has an area known as Alps? Michigan, Nebraska, or Ohio? Hmm. America takes a few cues from everywhere and remixes them dozens of ways. And amidst a few different states, you can actually find some so-called Alps over in Nebraska. Yeah. Colorado's ranges probably look closer, but they didn't name it that way. 8,593 players got it right. We got three more questions till we find out who's getting some of this money. So follow me at Matt What's Funny. Let's get it, honey. Q10, my friends. Time to get it in. Which of these structures is the tallest? Space Needle, Statue of Liberty, or Washington Monument? Okay. 
Once you've seen the Burj Khalifa, they're all pretty tiny. But our local landmarks are stuff to be proud of, too. And by about a 50-foot lead, the Space Needle squeaks ahead of the Washington Monument. Solid 600 feet. Wah, wah, wee, wah. 11,897 players got that one right. Good job, babies. Two more questions. Let's get it. Ooh. Q11, all dogs go to heaven. Which of these nations was part of the Federal Republic of Central America? Colombia, Nicaragua, or Panama? So excited. All right, this was the basis for a lot of modern Central America, and it started in the 1820s, but the outliers included Venezuela and that central classic, Panama. But Nicaragua was in. Colombia was just too South American. 11,242. Moving on to the final question of the game. Question 12, y'all. Question 12. What's that smell? Smells like money indeed. Q12, let's get it for all the marbles. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy projects off, uh, often, projects often use music composed by a member of what band? The Eagles, ELO, or Pink Floyd? I was like, projects, it's projects in this context. It does. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, projects often use music. Okay. Pink Floyd had a presence on the original radio show, but the music most connected to the saga is the instrumental piece heard in the, uh, the radio, TV, and film version. I'm talking about Bernie Leiden's Journey of the Sorcerer, originally by the Eagles. Oh yeah, 4,843 of you just won HQ Trivia, baby! Do a little flip. <laughs> Celebrate yourself. On this beautiful Saturday. It is a beauteous Saturday indeed. So beauteous. Shout out to Tree Army. I knew you had to get that Pennsylvania question. You, you got tree in your name. FLCDR. Uh, HD Het 3U7. Lost it per. Saina123, Boris K. Stu, Den Markey, Tana Baha'i07, Setzer, uh, Jonas Syed, uh, Webb Brad, Max Finch12, Markey1999, Morgan19, Leo9467, Birthday Reverse, Uwe. Another thrill pack game of HQ enters the books. Thanks to everybody who came out. You make it worth putting these on night after night. Woo! If you didn't clean up, keep coming back, okay? Learn some more stuff and get one game closer to your next win. Remember, tomorrow we're going all out for Oscar night. So bone up on this year's Oscars. Oscars past and uh, the movies and the ceremonies because it's all fair game. I'll see you then. And remember that charity, the Justin Turner Foundation, making so much better in a hurting world. Learn more about them and their great work at justinturnerfoundation.com. Maybe give them a little something, too. There it is. That's Team Rubicon.